Hello, wonderful world. It's Jennifer here at Eureka Astrology and Healing, doing the Virgo New Moon Astrological Forecast for September 14th, 2023 at 8.39 p.m. Central Standard Time. And as always, this is a general forecast. Take note where it could be in your chart if you know your chart, uh, especially with Virgo. What house is it in? What aspects do you have if you know astrology? You don't have to know that, but like it'll give you a better insight. You can always have a chart reading to see where it's going to impact you directly with me. You can check out my website at Eureka Astrology and Healing. With that, let's talk about the notables. So it's a new moon. So it's time for new energies for, and the theme is Virgo. And it's time for what fall. Um, so I don't want to say studying, but um, learning, understanding what you want, what you don't want, learning how to um, eliminate things that no longer serve you or are functional in your life. It's very Virgoian. Who do you want in your life? What do you want in your life? It's going to be a big theme because Mercury is there and it's thinking about that as well as also the light, you know, the sun is shining in on that. And, you know, I'm here at Lake Crescent, so it's going to be loud. I just wanted to make a note of that. You can't even see the mountain so bright behind me, but I just thought this was a great way to uh, do the forecast. I'm out here in Washington. Uh, so I'm going to put that little note there just in case you wonder what the heck's going on behind me here. Um, so that's the first notable. Again, they'll kind of bring it back to the forecast. Is Virgo is a real good time to think about. <laughs> think is one of the key terms. But also do, and with service, to how you're going to fix things, how you're going to move forward in your life, and what don't you need anymore. The second notable is it is retrograde season still, meaning a lot of plants are retrograde, and technically the plants are actually more uh, intense because they're closer to the earth, but it causes a lot of extra energy. Uh, as you can see like water, like how loud it is when there's extra water behind me, it's a lot louder than a little stream or a creek that doesn't move that fast. This is what's happening with most of the planets, except for Venus and Mars. Everybody else going back, redoing, rethinking. And even with Venus, it was retrograde for a while and it is now going direct, going over the ground that it was on. So like thinking and kind of moving forward with how are we going to go with the desires we have for our joy, our creativity, our expression, how we're seen in the world. Those are things that we're going to be moving forward in on, but it's still not new ground. It's old ground we've gone over twice before and this is a third pass. And what took its place in the retrograde season is Jupiter from the last chart. So now Jupiter is retrograde and it's in Taurus. So it, that's again, like, I feel like that's a little bit of energy of holding on to resources um, and being like, ah, I need more things, I need more things. Um, but I'll talk a little bit more about that because I feel like it, it kind of plays into the chart. It's like, we want to keep things, but we also have to cut things out of our life. So it's kind of like, yeah, what are our motives with what we're doing with our resources, right? Are we doing it out of fear or is it out of like preparation in a good way? That's very for going into. The third insight is that we have a, a insight, ah, notable, same difference. Uh, is there's a strong mutable energy going on. So flexibility and adaptability, it's a good time for changes. Even though things are retrograde, maybe we could say you're planning for the changes, but when mutable energy is around, it's like, hey, like we don't have to be so rigid. You don't have to say so stuck in a pattern. It's kind of time. So you could definitely try to harness that energy at this new moon for change. So let's get into the chart. This chart has a strong air of independence and solitude. And the reason I say that is where planets are and aspects, but also um, Raven Caldera's Moon Phase Astrology book. It's about to get loud here. There's a boat behind me. Um, this is the Maiden's Moon. And the Maiden, so this is a young moon, remember? So the young Maiden who maybe hasn't got a lot of experience. Um, and what this Maiden desires, very Virgonia, is to be in solitude, to be alone, to get the things done that she, they need to do, they want to do, and how they um, approach the world and what they want and don't want and maybe or it is to like you know work on perfecting something a craft or a skill that you can be put out into the world and so it's calling for us to kind of go in and I talked about this last year but what's interesting with this chart is there's this huge call hey go in pull in you know what do you need what do you want but there's also this energy of like hey nothing's done you know on an island so to speak like no one is an island this is about group and community and working together to get more, to accomplish more, right? Like many hands make light work instead of one person just slogging it through. So there's gonna be this call for like, hey, come on in, pull in, take that moment, enjoy the solitude, yet don't cut everybody out. And this new moon really can foster like, hey, I'm just gonna wall myself off. I don't need this, I don't need that. I know 
that I'm capable and I'm reliable and I can fix this and I can do that. It's like, ah, eh, but. So really, if that energy is calling you or it's happening, try to keep a balance, especially. The last time this moon came around last year, it was a little different. There was a little bit more um, harmony within the pulling in and, and a little less of like, hey, you have to get out there. It's like, mm, don't, don't cut yourself off completely because there's just a lot of independence. The North Node is in Aries, like again, asking like, where you stand on your own feet, be independent, take charge. Uh, what else do we have as far as independence in here? Mm -hmm. I'm taking a look. I feel like there was more going on in a couple other signs. Um, yeah, where Saturn, Pluto, just there's a sense of like, hey, let's take charge, let's get, let's get going. But, and again, kind of on our own, like I have what it, it takes and that, that's a good thing. But yet, you know, there's um, in Libra, Mars is in Libra. And it's not as happy as home. But Libra is about, so Mars is our drive and like what should be like going towards. And that's like, hey, cooperation, um, partnerships. I mean, it doesn't have to be like a romantic partnership. It can be any kind of partnership. But kind of making sure that you're utilizing um, your connections as a resource. There you go. And what you could do at this time, especially if you're doing new moon rituals, is like, okay, how can you not, like, you're not using people because it's going to be a reciprocal relationship, but like, all right, I have all these great relationships for resources for what I would like to do. Which relationships maybe aren't going to, like, aren't the greatest for me or for what I'm doing? Maybe it's a good relationship, but it's not right for your project. This is a good time to discern that point, like, take a look at the scope, but then trust yourself and move forward and connect with these people. Um, let's see what else I got going on here. Uh, there could also be, yeah, with Neptune where it's at with this new moon, it's opposing it. I could see that there's definitely an illusion of the solitude. Like, oh, it's great to be isolated. Like, this is where it's at. Like, the world is perfect and I don't need anything other than my little hidey hole. And also maybe the illusion of like, hey, martyrdom. Like, I can maybe, or because like, sometimes Virgo has the energy of like sacrifice and Pisces is of martyrdom, it's like, oh, I can give, you know, or I can give all my energy away and serve people to the point where, you know, um, I not die, but you know, like you, maybe you die to like your needs. Uh, so that's another thing. Don't go into the illusion that, you know, you need to either isolate or sacrifice everything that you have, want and need for a situation. Um, there's a lot of different aspects here. Um, one that I thought was kind of important was that um, try using your resources differently to solve any problems that arise. Um, there's a little bit of tension with uh, Jupiter and another planet and I'm seeing that like we want to be going forward but like there's a little bit of holding on of resources. So this is again a way like to go like hey maybe I have to let something go or I, it's weighing me down actually. This isn't helping me do anything other than slow me down. And like if you give it away or you know whatever donate maybe that resource is then very used by someone else that's very very like someone else has a practical use and that just puts positive energy into the universe because then something that you know i'm not saying everything needs to be used but like you know has its purpose and just kind of keeps that flow of energy going instead of stagnation um and again for the new ritual new moon rituals if you're going to do any i mean there's so many things you can do what would you like to fix or work on or make more um like something that's more like harmonious and flowing, like, you know, making something utilitarian almost to the point of like, yeah, it's so functional, it's perfect. I don't have to do all this extra energy, just making it to the T. But really for me, it's like, reflect a little bit. Cause you don't have to take action necessarily if you don't want to, because there's a lot of inner energy, but what do you want less of in your life that's not quality? What do you want more of in your life that is quality, that is gonna help you help others, help you serve others, help you um, find peace and solitude, help you find form and function and, you know, all the beautiful things that Virgo can offer and bring. But what do you want to call into your life, really? Because I think as the planets move uh, direct, it won't be for a couple of months. I mean, you can still take the action right on this, but I feel with all the retrogrades, it's going to be a real time to contemplate all that. And especially if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, like where I'm at, Winter's coming. It's a time to write prep, reserve, and like go inward a little bit so that you can move forward. I feel like the energy has been very fast a lot of this year and, you know, almost to the point of like, you know, getting tired. Like I'm running a marathon. I need to stop. And this is kind of, I feel like a good pause point to really reflect on like, what did I do this year 
that really was useful and helpful. What did I do that really wore me out and did not get returns? And it doesn't mean it has to be monetary. It could also be spiritual or it, it can be so many different things, but a time for that assessment. And you know, you don't know the time you want to move forward with it. You can do that at any time, but let yourself rest a little bit. With that, I'm Jennifer at Eureka Astrology and Healing. Thanks for bearing with, bearing with me with the light and the loud water. Um, I just wanted to share this beautiful part of uh, nature with you because it's always nice when you're on vacation to share the joy of new places and new experiences. With that, I'm Jennifer Eureka Astrology and Healing. May the plants ground you and the stars guide you. Ciao for now.